Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter, tutor up on YouTube. And in this video, I'm going to cover how to paint soft clouds and distant mountains. So this is a photograph kindly shared by a Patreon member of mine, Duncan. Thanks very much, Duncan, for sharing this photograph of the Teng now I need to get and see if I can get this pronunciation right. Teng Bosch Monastery, T-E-N-G-B-O-C-H-E -E Monastery, um, up in the Himalayas, on the way to base camp, Mount Everest. So this is where a lot of climbers follow this route and they, they um, light candles in the shrine in this monastery before traveling on, for, for good luck, traveling on to, to their... Um, Everest adventure. So this is um, a very old, one of the main monasteries in this area, and then it's beautiful mountain ridge, um, that, that lovely sort of twin peaks there of the mountain behind, which I think is called the, and again, I will pronounce this very badly, but it's, I think it's Kum, Kumbu Yui La. So there's three words to this, K-H-U-M-B-U, second word, Y-U-I, um, and then third word, L-H-A, but a distant, distant mountain, and then these soft clouds. How do we do that in watercolour? How do we, how can we give the impression of these distant um, mountains and the, the, in the, in front of them, these, these soft clouds trying to get, create the volume of those clouds? And then this feeling of the rem remoteness of this location and some some nice colours in there. I just take a little bit of green on this monastery, um, certainly green on the entrance here, this, uh, this archway, if I can call it that, um, leading to some steps going up to the main monastery building. And then a little bit of warmth with these red... Um, sort of um reddish sort of quite a quite a cool red really to these these buildings left and right so we'll be going through a number of different steps in this um demo i will give as much commentary as i can along the way um and it's it's i'm going to go through the complete process the drawing um and the the initial wash and my technique for painting these soft clouds and the mountain in the background, and then all of these different architectural details and shadows. Now, if you are on Patreon, please take a look at Patreon. If you want to get active and get involved and start doing some of these paintings yourselves and get a critique from me, take a look at patreon.com. If you've never heard of Patreon, think of it like a club where you um, join and then there's a, a very low monthly subscription basically almost the cost of a cup of coffee a month and you take part in these projects that I sent a set and um, depending on what with Patreon you get different levels of membership normally and in my club if you go up to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot you'll see all those different levels of participation it really does help me um, support me in, in creating videos like this and also giving a little bit back to the community to the watercolor community um, with these critiques so take a look at that and uh, for those of you on patreon very much look forward to seeing your efforts here um, and I give a little for some of you I will, will be giving you a, a little video critique um, in return on my tips on how you got by so stick with me um, fairly long video step by step let's see how we get on first step will be the drawing stage the paper i'm using is saunders waterford this is cold press 300 grams or 140 pounds and it's 15 inches by 11 inches 15 inches across 11 inches down secured with some masking tape it's not been stretched, and uh, as I normally do. 
an initial outline drawing with a fairly soft pencil. This is a 3B pencil, just getting in the main shapes of where I'm positioning everything from a composition point of view. So starting with the mountains behind, just the, uh, the peak of the mountains, and then the monastery, the main monastery building, on, in that right-hand third, and now these outer buildings, two, two reddish buildings, um, either side of the entrance. So that's the left-hand one. Important to get the roof structures right, I think, and also there's just a, a little bit of perspective to deal with. Uh, and then getting the verticals as vertical as I can. That's the upper part of the entrance and the right-hand column, and then this bit of a slope to that roof. Then over to the right, we've got another red building, almost, well, very similar to the one on the left and the roof, the side, left side, right side. And then some minor buildings are off to the right. Now the foreground is going to be quite simple. Nothing really to draw there. Just strengthen up and make sure I've got right the different tiers the levels of the monastery, and then these these angles um, either side of the roof. Uh, again, thinking about perspective, we're slightly more, we're looking at it, we're not actually dead center, we're looking at it slightly from the right. So that right-hand edge there is gonna be a bit more vertical than the one on the left. And thinking about the these different levels as they come down, There's a lean-to building on the right-hand side there, uh, just a gentle slope to the roof on that one. And then some smaller buildings, I guess in the village, just extending out to the left. We can just see a few rooftops to those, so quite simple shapes. And with those verticals, I'm trying to align it with, try and get parallel to the masking tape on the side. That's a good um, little aid for me, trying to get those verticals. It's important to also get the this front entrance here symmetrical and the widths of the two sides equal and then the monastery fairly, even though we're just looking at a slight angle, need to make sure it's fairly symmetrical with those three layers. Little sort of finial or um, spire at the top of the building. So that's the initial drawing, quite simple, nothing much to it. Getting getting in the, the main monastery right, the, the outer buildings and that, and the placement of the mountains behind. Now, laying down the wash, I want to get a lot of softness to the background and the cloud shape. So I'm laying down a thin layer of clear water, clean water, um, over the, the entire upper portion of the painting down to just almost touching the edge of the middle ground, the buildings. So the top half of the painting, I'm, I'm just laying this down with a soft mop brush, 
could be any brush actually, um, but just uh, getting an even application of that. So that there's, I mean, the paper is starting to buck a little bit. So I want to make sure there's no puddles. And uh, if I just keep applying the brush like this, I can make sure that it's well and truly soaked in some strokes in different directions. And looking at, looking at the paper from the side, I can see against the light if it's shining a bit. And I'm just lifting off a little bit of the excess moisture at the top because I do want that to be have some fairly hard edges with the outline of the mountain. But the softness will be in that cloud below the peak of the mountain. So, ready to paint some sky. I'm using, uh, well, let me just describe my palette of colours to you. I picked up some lavender there. And just uh, getting in that darker portion, the top left corner is quite dark before it comes down to a soft edge over the, the cloud. Um, so burnt sienna there and lavender. Or I could have used a, a cerulean blue. It needs to be a sort of opaqueish color, I think. Now just carrying that across, going over the outline of the mountains. Right, my, my colours as per normal, um, very little change. Uh, on f starting from the top right corner, I've, sorry, the top right, I've got neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, which I've been using for the sky in conjunction with that lavender down the bottom. And then I've got yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, uh, Ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, Windsor red, light red, cadmium orange, and, and a lemon yellow. So getting in here, the, the actual cloud area is a lot damper, a lot more moist than the top portion of the painting where I wanted a little bit of a harder edge around the around the, the peak of the mountain. So I'm just dropping in uh, just really any darker color um, could be anything, but it's going to give us give us that soft edge, and trying to make sure the cloud has some doesn't doesn't look too perfect. Uh, so just odd darker areas, softer darker areas of the cloud. Just to give it that kind of the volume of it, the um, the the texture of it. Now down below the cloud, we can just begin to see in the distance, in in the mist, elements of the just the lower slopes of that mountain and the hills behind the the village. So I'm I'm just again using this mop brush, and the mop brush has a good edge to it. And with slightly darker, thicker paint, burnt sienna mainly, just placing that in and up to the bottom edge of the cloud to get that soft edge again. Now, while that's just getting a little bit drier, the top portion, I can just lay down the base wash of the lower part of the painting and the, the the main part of the monastery I think is a little bit sort of greenish so I'm picking up a bit of viridian green there um, which has been mixed what's contaminated with some other color just to take the uh, the edge off it but it's I think it just it looks slightly green to me like it should well a little bit green and a tiny bit of burnt sienna that's that's the combination of those two colours. I've added a bit of yellow ochre there, but mainly that sort of cool green. Um, that's what I'm going to on this one. And extend that over, over all of the buildings, or most of the buildings there, the main monastery buildings. The colours over to the left, the village houses, can be anything. I'm just taking the, um, just covering the white, oh, the white of the paper up. And then this main main 
entrance um, arch here is is again that sort of cool green. Now the buildings left and right of the entrance is quite it's a cool red so I'm, I'm mixing a bit of Windsor red and my Alaris and Crimson the rooftops and the actual buildings it all, it's all going to blend in with each other a little bit but I will I will I will be creating more of the definition of the of the buildings when I go in with the dark shadows afterwards so continuing on just covering up the paper pretty much covering everything you can see also above this back in the sky because the paper was moist it's still traveling a little bit i've got a, a slight slope on the board maybe about maybe about 10 degrees or something like that uh, so it's still gently traveling along now the foreground is how can I describe it? It's sort of, uh, I guess it's the sort of grass, um, the end of season grass. It's sort of quite dry here. And um, yeah, I guess there's a bit of sort of stubble. So it's a, predominantly like a yellowish, brownish, uh, tiny bit of green in there. And gently sloping from from left to right. Uh, top left to bottom right add a little bit of warmth in the foreground um, take it up to meet the red buildings just te test whether that mountain area is a little bit dry where I can go in and, and paint that um, paint that top there just to get that that uh, lighter edge so I'm going to just like test there just to make sure I've got the right color so a sort of light, um, a lightish color where the the sun is coming from the left, I think. Um, sun is coming from the left, and just applying the base color of the mountain now. So I'm going to get a, a relatively hard edge along the peak of the mountain and the sides, but then I want as it hits the top of this cloud, I want that to be nice and soft. So that's where it is. If I had a moisture meter now and I shoved it into that paper, I bet I bet the bottom of that mountain, the top of that cloud, is going to be a, a good bit wetter than the top where I am now. Someone should invent that, a moisture meter for paper. Probably an ordinary mo moisture meter would do, but it might damage it when you, when you uh, prod it with those prongs on a moisture meter. Although I think you can get some that are, that you can hold a, um, a centimeter or so above the surface to measure that. So down, down to the base of the mountain, over to the right. Now, over to the right, I think it's a little bit further away, um, but it's it's it more misty. So it's going to just sort of melt into the clouds on on the right hand side. The main the the main peak um, of the mountain on the left uh, is going to be darker harder edges now I need to let that mountain dry a little bit before I go in with some cool blues for the shadows on the right hand side just while I'm doing that I've picked up a soft muff a soft mop brush uh, with clear water in it it could be well, it needs to be a soft brush. I'm gently just laying down some streaks on the damp surface, and you can see what it's doing. It's creating quite a nice pattern in that that uh, foreground area where where the water's being dropped, and it sort of disperses the the paint either side of that line, the 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 the, the brush mark, and it creates those softer, darker ridges. And I can then just a little bit of randomness with some splodges um, but but mainly I've got those those streaks in there and just and just let watercolor do what it's doing it's uh, again traveling a little bit 
I might strengthen it up later on with some dry brush marks, but we want to get the impression of that that sort of stubble in the grass and some lighter areas and darker areas. But the the angle I've got there is just a sort of subtle, gentle top left to bottom right, and then the um, the the lighter areas. We I can make those into rocks. There's some some rocks in there and. Uh, um, boulders and things that we can add some shadow behind. Now, just to speed up the drying of the mountain, I've whipped out the uh, hair dryer just to dry off um, this a good bit before I go on to the next stage. You can see it's as it's drying, it's going a lot lighter. So, um, you know, for example, that red, when I hit, had the, the red of the, the the buildings there, there's two buildings either side of the entrance. Um, initially, I thought, oh, that's a bit too, it's a bit too uh, bright or dark red, but it, it, it sort of mellows. It does get a good bit um, lighter there. Right, soft squirrel mop brush, check the edge. Um, and then just check that, that I've got, uh, it's quite dry as well. And I'm laying in some clear water now at the base of the mountain because I, as I go, as I take the, the darker shadow mixture into it, I want that soft edge again along the, the top of the cloud. So I'm laying in once, once the, once the mountain was dry, I'm laying in clear water now, just along that bottom edge where I want the soft shadows to come in. Now I'm mixing up some darker blue here, a bit of cobalt, a bit of ultramarine blue, could be anything, but a darker, cooler color for the little sort of ridges um, and uh, the right-hand side of these of these peaks, just to now give it a bit more form um so these couple of, there's two peaks here and uh the left hand one just gently with a small a small synthetic brush gradually taking it down the the paper is it's fairly dry it might be still a little bit moist but certainly moist uh at on the top edge of the clouds um little bit further down on the right hand side and just keep mixing ultramarine blue cobalt blue and then down into that wet that clear wet so we and we get that soft edge again and that and that just hopefully gives it a bit more of a gives that mountain a bit more of a three-dimensional form use my fingertips if I've put in a bit too much paint it's a quick way of <laughs> lifting off a little bit of the paint um, just as I see it uh, before it's got a chance to dry now just con continuing that this cool blue shadow over to the right hand side and going a tiny bit softer, lighter on this part of the mountain because I think it might be just a little bit further away. That's what I think with the photograph and then drag it down into those clouds, trying to get a jagged edge to the top edge of the clouds, trailing away to the right over the top of the monastery. Just dip my brush in some water to weaken the mixture even more. Just a bit of lost and found where it just peeks through a gap in the clouds. Just I'm just imagining that ridge just continue on now. Soften up the bottom edge. This is an important edge here. Make it a bit darker at the base and dip my brush in the water, clear water, and then just tease out the edges a little bit. 
keep dipping the water, soften up those marks there if they're too if the edges are too hard with that same brush. They're too hard, dip it in the water, soften them up, make them sort of almost disappear. Now lower down on the um, lower slopes here, just where the village starts, just make it a tiny bit darker here. Um, again, if the edges are too hard, soften them up while the paint is still moist. So I keep keep using that that blue uh, paint that I've mixed there in that middle mixing section. Back at the top, I can just create a, just a little bit more form with some little gullies and crevices and uh, ridges on that mountain. Try and make that second peak just a little bit, a little bit more pronounced, slightly darker paint in, in places. So there's a few lights and darks in there. Not just a uniform, not just a uniform shadow. Drag a few dry brush marks. There's not too much water on the brush now. And just tease it with my finger if it's if there's too much paint there or the edge is too hard. Just drag it down a bit. Just test how dry the surface is. And the next step is to start adding in the middle ground, these village houses. So with the squirrel mop brush and a good edge, a little bit too light there, darken it up, don't see it. Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, sort of greyish blue for some of these rooftops. Try and strengthen up that roof there. Just a few, a handful of rooftops um, in that middle ground. And coming up to the roof of the entrance archway, I'm just beginning to create some form there by painting around that, sort of negatively painting around that with a dart behind the the, uh, at the, the uh, roof to the entrance archway. Just, it's just beginning to create a little bit of form to it. These, uh, some of these mountains just need a little bit of strengthening up on the shady side, on the right hand side of the mountains. Just darken that a tiny bit with this small synthetic brush, just here and there, pick up a few areas of darkness. Now that's, I've come into the cloud area then and it's gone a little bit too hard and edged. So I've just mopped up, mopped it up with a little bit of clear water to soften that edge and take up the paint, just lift it off a bit. So it doesn't look too bad. Soften up this tiny area around the top of the monastery.
Let's check that that, that area is dry in the, on the left-hand side. Back with the medium sized mop brush, something dark now to start the buildings on the left hand side. A bit of neutral tint, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, just mixed up, neutral tint. Not too, this is actually quite um, thick, this paint. It's not, uh, not too watery. Check the point on my brush and now I'm looking at the photograph and I'm just observing the, the shape of the dark shadows underneath the, the rooftops and just continuing that along, looking at those shapes. So there's a bit of a, a rooftop there catching the light and then just a little 45 degree shadow. And the side of a house, or no, this is this is um, a rooftop here that's just behind the left-hand red building. I think the ridge of that roof is going to be almost horizontal. So neutral tint, burnt sienna, not too much water, and create this this left hand house, which is we can just see the end of it here coming into shot, and that will come down. There's a sort of tiny fence just um, just to the right of it but creating the, um, going up to the edge of the roof of the red bit, the left-hand red building, if you're still with me, um, come down, make it a little bit softer as I come down, and then a, a sort of low fence between that one and the red building, a few little posts, and some boulders or rocks in front of in front of that fence there so a dark a dark red mix now for this left hand Red House, I'm sure they've got a name. It, it looks like they've got um, flags on them. Uh, maybe they're obviously something to do with the monastery, uh, some significance. Um, but they've quite a big, quite a big uh, entrance to this one on the left and the one on the right. But quite dark underneath the rooftops. Ultramarine blue, neutral tint, and crimson. Holding the brush as carefully as I can, and then just continue that shadow across to the right underneath the roof. And this doorway 
in the middle, quite a simple shape, but not a pure, I don't want to make it a pure rectangle, just get a bit of a, a jagged bottom edge, just where the light is, is coming in across the floorway. And then on the right hand side, darker shadow there. Bring that shadow down to the base. Make it a little bit weaker with some water. Altering blue, cobalt blue, and the shadow at the bottom of that building. Then over to coming over to the um, left hand side of the central arch, just just creating that um, going up to the left hand edge, creating some form there dark against the light and then just a little bit above what what's going on behind these um, these buildings here is just well you you could you could look closely at the photograph and then um, there's paint in every single wall or little tiny structure there there are some steps obviously going up to the uh, the main building but I just want to I want to try I, I paint mainly in a sort of loose impressionistic style so I want to just try and give an impression of um, of things going on in the background now there are some little just beginning to create some little tiny boulders and things going on um, in the foreground let's just make this left hand edge just a bit more clear, a bit more defined. So we'll pick up some water. And this, this, these background. Do the background first before doing the these foreground buildings. Just get in some sort of abstract shapes, creating the impression of something going on there. Um, the, the sort of, I guess they're they're terraced going up to that. The the main monastery building is a lot higher than these foreground, these front buildings. So I just want to um, create. The feeling of the, the terracing going up. Pretty important bit now is doing the main building itself with these different um, tiers, a bit like a wedding cake, I suppose in a way, with a bit of a light, um, a bit of a light sort of uh, spiral object coming up from the level below, but creating some hardish. They're really showing up quite a lot against the lighter cloud behind. Um, and this is where the initial drawing is, is very important, just to, I'm following that drawing, making sure that uh, I'm covering up the pencil lines. I don't want them, I want a nice crisp edge. I don't want to cover up those pencil marks as best I can. So it's really dark, um, this. It, it, it really could be any color, not black, uh, but just make it a bit more interesting. Could be a bit of red in there, could be a bit of cool. I really don't, from the photograph, the resolution, it's a little bit difficult to tell what kind of, um, painting schemes going on there. Uh, so this second level down to the main part of the building. Doesn't matter, there's a few little 
um, bits of the paper showing through just adds to a little bit more of an interesting shape to it now down to the main part of the building and some before I actually go in quite dark with the windows and the as I did on the two tiers above that dark the dark shell I'm just getting in some shadows here um, sort of quite sort of cool green and blue that that same color that I use for the building itself so um, and there's quite a quite a large overhang on the the route, so it's it's creating these shadows going across, and then that there's a bit of lean to on the right hand side that's got the shadow as well. Try and make it parallel to that first line I made, and creating the form of the red building just coming up to the edge of that red building, which is creating the outline go around the outline shape of that uh, rooftop of the red building shadow on that village house and then down up to the edge of the archway Bridging green, ultra in blue, bit of neutral tint, and another important part getting this entrance symmetrical looking and a dark, dark shadow underneath the roof. Not a, not a perfect straight line, just a few little jagged edges just where there could be the, the hint of some architectural molding or decorations just coming through and it does go down this dark shadow does go down a little bit to the area below Again, it's important to get that initial drawing right. So I can just, I can still see the pencil lines and I'm going up to that edge. Um, we've got the right hand side of the left column that's in shade, a bit of molding up in the angle there and coming down to the ground. Um, just continue the shadows across the ground. Just a little bit. And just beyond that, there's the hint of some wall or uh, the start of the steps going up to the monastery. There we are, just a few little steps up to the left hand, left hand edge of the right. Um, column if you're still with me and a bit of shadow on the right hand side drag across to there's a there's a sort of wall um, joining that entrance to the red building on the right hand side Shadow underneath the right hand red building. Drag across, trying to keep that. It's fairly horizontal, that, um, that top line there. There's some shadow on the right hand side, the, these steps going up to the monastery, a bit of shadow um, on a sort of retaining wall that's joining, that's joining that um, 
red building, diagonal shadow going across the red building. Not as dark as that, that first bit of shadow underneath the wall, so just a little bit lighter. And then darkness continues across on the right hand side. There's a building that's I think a little bit further back, but it's almost joined. Really when I'm looking at photograph, I'm, I'm just thinking about shapes. I'm not thinking about individual buildings. I'm just um, looking at these almost geometric abstract shapes of lights and darks. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it sort of comes together. Right, small brush. Cobalt green and quite important. Now I didn't draw in the the ridges coming down for coming down on this roof here. So I'm just um, hopefully getting it getting it fairly right. These just sort of darker green marks. And they they start off almost at a 45 degree angle. And then as they're going over to the right hand side, they're going to be a, just a little bit more vertical, not not too much. And there are running across the in the corners and the, the tops of that archway. There, there are some uh, dragons or or statues of animals or something like that uh, they're, they're, that would be too much detail so i'll just give a slight impression of those later on right strengthen up some of these houses the village houses on the left um, maybe a few vertical um, poles and decorations coming houses a bit of a chimney there strengthen up the shadow underneath the Roof on that far house, bit of an angle, shadow underneath that roof. darker shadow on the far house just creates a bit more of a contrast with the rooftop over the entrance window there there are quite quite a few windows in the photograph a lot of them are in the shade though so you can't really see at first glance um, how many there are Some of these lighter areas here, where, where I was doing a little bit of splattering with clear water, they could be now just emphasized a little bit more with some dark shadow behind them. And they they are straight away there, boulders and, and rocks. With the my medium sized mop brush, pick up a little bit of yellow ochre, a bit of uh, cobalt green, and burnt sienna. Just need to create a little bit more texture to the foreground. Um, not too much water, and just lightly this is this is why it's important to have a soft brush on rough paper because it just 
creates those little deckled marks. Um, and then the, these lines have them a tiny bit narrower and closer together in the distance, but then thicker and wider apart towards the foreground. Not sure if the uh, this area in front of the monastery it's um, it's just basically like like sort of dry mud. There's not much vegetation there, but just giving that there's lots of it's basically quite brown, quite sort of like a golden brown. But there's little dark areas here and there where maybe the soil is showing through, or there's a bit of shadow from some rocks. So just very lightly create these marks, continue on emphasizing some of the, um, some of those lines I, I've made previously with that, with that clear water. Back with the smaller synthetic brush, add a bit more detail to some of the buildings. So this, I think it's almost sort of golden, um, the, the uh, a sort of spike on top of the uppermost uh, tier of the monastery, just a little bit of um, sort of yellowy, yellowy gold up there. And there are a few more little uprights I'm just picking up as I'm going across the scene. Neutral tint, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Create a few lines for the rooftops, um, but not too many. If I make too many of these lines across the, the roofs, or if I paint in every single tile, it would just look a little bit overworked. So I just want to give the, the hint of that structure. Um, back to this central archway, uh, strengthen up the darks right above that top area there, and here, right hand side, there's some circular, three or four circular um, plaques or something on the, um, the the supports to the arch to the. Uh, Entrance. I'm not sure what they are, but if, I don't. That would be again like the tiles. That'd be too much detail. Forty-five degree shadow, just mimicking the, repeating the angle of the shadows in the uh, monastery behind. There's a sort of slight rise to from from the foreground to the uh, monastery, and just a few little um, platforms of brickwork here, just in front of this red house. So a few dark lines.
there's a big sort of rock in the middle. That's that's that rock there. Uh, I think it's quite nice having those rocks there. They they just sort of lead the eye a little bit up to that the um, entrance. So it creates some darker greens for, for going back onto the going back now into the main building and the darks in there. Neutral tint, bit of viridian green, cobalt green, and very carefully following that pencil outline. The shadow just at the uh just below the eaves of this roof. I guess it comes out quite some distance. Neutral tint, ultra in blue. Get, get uh, keep quite careful for the uh, that right hand edge, and and the windows in the middle. There's there's uh, a wider middle window, and then two two narrower ones left and right. So. That's the uh, the first one. I should have actually drawn these in. Um, that would have helped, but it might have been quite difficult to see the pencil lines with the two layers that I've painted in there. So I'm just sort of guessing, um, estimating where those those windows will be. I think that's about right. As long as they look uh, symmetrical. Now a second row of windows and then it's down to the entrance another window there another window there uh, And a couple here, which again just reinforce the shape of the entrance, the roof of the entrance, just painting around that outline. Dark shadow on the right hand side of that monastery, just that right uh, right hand wall coming down to the top of the red building, and then the lean to dark shadow there, and another bit of darkness going over to the right, like another lean a lean to to the lean to uh, window with a few windows on that right hand side. Not perfect with the windows. I don't make them perfect rectangles. Just leave a little bit of um, a few gaps and jagged edges. Right, form that shape of that window. Just goes around the edge of the, that red roof. A few more windows.
neutral tint, colors in crimson, create the this uh, entrance to this right hand red building. down to the ground. Now on the right hand side, I, I can, I can be fairly um, impressionistic with what's going on there. All the detail has to be in the sort of middle part of the picture, right? Just a few more little stones and boulders in the foreground. Bit more detail to this right hand red building, and then a few lines just to give the impression of that um, the roof covering and on that left hand building as well. The next step is I want to paint the, there's a couple of pine trees just behind the monastery. Now these pine trees, they're, they're, they're pines or they're spruce, but they've got, the, there's a bit of softness to this tree. So I need to um, lay down some clear water first of all, and then drop in little blobs of darker, color for the foliage and that would just give me hopefully the appearance of a, a pine tree or a spruce. So here's clear water where these pine trees are going to be. Not too much water, just dampening up the surface with clear water. Fairly even application and then smaller brush, fridging green, bit of Burnt umber, bit of bit of a uh, ultramarine blue, and then just test test it first of all, and drop in these these marks, which will hopefully just just um, give that impression of a, a pine tree behind. So that's that smaller one, slightly bigger one on the right hand side. So you've got these lateral branches coming out from the pine tree and then little blobs of foliage. And as they're as they're very thin needles, they're not going to be like they're not sort of big, big leaves. Um, so you will get uh, the appearance of of um, softness around those those leaves. I think that's it looks okay. Now I'm just picking up a bit more of the detail in the middle ground. I keep looking at the photograph just for extra little bit of information or inspiration just uh, 
seeing if there's any more detail I can add in. We're not not uh, there. There is a balance, you know. You don't want to overdo it with too much detail. All the little architectural marks and um, things that are going on there. Stronger shadow, these 45 degree shadows. Um, kind of those buildings, strengthen up a bit of shadow underneath there. Not much water on the brush now, just, just a little bit of dark pigment. more little stones and chippings across the ground. A little bit of a squiggly mark there around the, uh, the, the splattering marks. Maybe a few horizontals just to create the impression of some brickwork. There's, there's a few little structures on top of that entrance archway, so I can't see exactly what they are in the photograph, but um, just put in a few marks there just to give, just to say that there's something. Um, Put in a darker band just below the roof, and it's just a slight. Um, it does curve. It's not a straight line. It does curve ever so slightly towards the edges. Curls up on the left. Curls up on the right. Strengthen up the shadow on the right hand side, just um, making sure it's a strong vertical get coming up to the, uh, the top of the red building on the right. Makes, that, makes the red building stand out just a little bit more. Little horizontals on the um, these spikes that are coming up from the building. Makes some of these marks a bit bit darker, a bit thicker. 
particularly at the base. a few horizontal lines there. That, that left hand building looks like it's got some funny sort of brickwork, light, light bricks, dark bricks, um, then that fence or little wall. And some more details to that red building few little marks here and there just to pick up some of the, the stubble or the, the dusty, dusty uh, foreground. So as I normally do, just a quick um, uh, summary and uh, give myself a little bit of a critique of this painting. The Teng Bosch Monastery in the Himalayas, Tibet, Nepal, um, on the way to Mount Everest. Thanks again to Duncan in my Patreon club for the kind sharing of this photograph. Duncan's actually got loads of photographs of um, his travels over Asia. So uh, loads of inspiration for us on Patreon. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the main object was, was of course, the, the um, style of the monastery here, but also the building, the, <laughs> the, the mountains in the background. And trying to get that soft edge of that that cloud pushing that mountain back so just a slight going a bit more just a slight soft edge on that on that mountain and a little bit of bluish shadow on the right hand side but that soft edge coming down into the cloud and then trying to create a little bit of volume to the to the cloud as well with these darker areas and then coming down to the the, the lower slopes of that mountain, just uh, again, a soft edge at the bottom of the cloud, uh, it, it coming down into to the, uh, the village houses. And a number of different techniques that were used. It's important to get the drawing right, get the, make sure the drawing's right before you start painting on, a, on something that's so architectural like this. And there's not too much perspective to deal with. Um, in that a lot of the the rooftops they're they're almost horizontal but a slight slope um in the foreground here top left to bottom right and so not not too difficult from a perspective point of view but there's a lot of symmetry here so the the symmetry of this building the symmetry of the two red buildings um trying to get the the, the three tiers here get that kind of symmetrical as well um, down that down that middle line. And a few different watercolour techniques. Well, obviously we started with the wash, bit of wet in wet. Um, it's important to plan this as well. Plan your, your sequence of uh, steps. And with that plan, try and, try and stick to the plan. Don't try and deviate off of that plan if you've given it some thought. But yeah, a number of different um, watercolour techniques, tiny bit of splattering. I use the um, a clear brush, clear water, to create some of these lighter areas um, in, the, in the foreground here. Some dry brush marks as well that work quite well on rough paper. And then using different brushes to... to make these different marks that um, 
particularly in some of these shadows, the uh, the marks of the shadows and the marks of these windows as well. Pretty important to get that central entrance looking right as well. Yeah, so there we have it, Teng Bosch Monastery. Hopefully I pronounced it right again. But those of you on Patreon, um, have a go with this, depending on what um, level of membership you're on. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your painting and giving you a critique of this. Um, so for more information on the projects and loads of other things that are going on and exclusive things that are going on on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot for more information. Catch up with you on the next video.